Okay, guys, well, I will decode this Freemasons diagram for you now that I've uh, got the channel update out there and um, we can start moving on and looking at a lot of these diagrams and seeing how we can use the key and the information that the key has helped us access to unlock the information that is within all of these diagrams. Now, the thing is, is that if we're going to look at these diagrams and try and find something else in them, then we're never really going to find the real information. And so what we need to do is apply what we know from the key and from the mystery teaching series. And that is the basics, that there are twin souls that split uh, upon conception from the mind of the creator and they are incarnated onto the physical plane where they experience a cycle existing in the physical form, uh, reincarnating continuously throughout that cycle and at the end of that cycle the cosmic force and light and the influence of God returns and these ethereal souls then once again leave their physical containers to reunite back with God consciousness. And that's the number nine, which is the Trinity times the Trinity, basically. The divine number of nine. This is, you know, going back to God consciousness. Now, this is what pretty much, well, no, this is what all of the information is telling us that is authentic because it's all based on the same thing and that's the key. And the key is based on sacred geometry. And so it's unlocked the sacred geometry within all of these diagrams in relation to the chakras and what the chakras actually mean in regards to the story of our soul. And so we know that the root chakra is our foundation and where we're actually manifest onto the physical plane and we're also playing out our destiny. And we also know that's where we begin our ascent up the seven gates because we've got that represented in the key as the two sevens which are representing the male and female ethereal twin souls at the bottom gate waiting to ascend and well that's what they're doing throughout their incarnations they're moving back up throughout their experiences they're learning how to move back up into their ethereal body through their gates and this is what our destiny entails, this whole process of moving through our gates. And so this is basically what all of these diagrams and a lot of these religious paintings, it's pretty much all about the same thing. And if it's not, it's just about different processes and symbolism that is related to the same thing because it's the story of the soul. So it really is everywhere. And so... Now we can see with the key what we've got within these Freemasonry diagrams, except there is just so much coded information. I don't understand a lot of the symbolism, but I can pick out the ethereal and I can pick out, you know, the chakra system and also the relating symbolism to us moving beyond our foundation into our heart, past our heart. Um, and through the third eye, opening the third eye, and then to the crown and reuniting with God consciousness. And so we'll start at the root chakra. And we see that it's represented by the Freemasons by a star. Now this is really interesting for a couple of reasons. And one is completely not really anything to do with ancient information. And it was something that I heard recently. But because it did actually cross my path at a time when I was... Um, you know, looking into all this and then, you know, this information crossed my path, um, I thought it was relevant. So I will actually talk about it. Now, first of all, we can see that the star is five pointed. Now that's representing the pentagram, but it's also representing destiny because it's five points and five is destiny. And so we can see that within this symbolism, not only do we have the four elements being represented, overseen by the ether and overseen by spirit, which is what the pentagram symbolism represents. But if we look at it within more layers, we see that it's also destiny being played out on foundation because foundation's four and then we've got uh, a five, which means that's the destiny that we are about to experience. And this is what these two souls 
are basically showing us they're about to start their destiny and uh, the male is on the left and the female is on the right now it's opposite in the Kabbalah tree but in the ancient Egyptians we can see that they have got Horus on the left and Isis on the right so this is why I am now starting to look at this in the same way with the Freemasons because it looks like they have absolutely got everything um, that the ancient Egyptians have got pretty much the same whereas it looks like Kabbalah in the tree there are these slight differences and even the Sephiroth are uh, numbered differently but they still connect so it's still relevant so anyway, the reason why I do think that the males on the left and the females on the right is for a few reasons, and I'll show you. And this is the sacrum as well. We can see that they're holding hands, okay? So that's the sacrum chakra. But the reason I do think that is, for one, she's wearing a veil on her head, and just the way she's standing, and she's got the sword, and a lot of time you'll see the woman holding the sword. Uh, I mean, he's got the sword too, but he's got the, um, the beard as well. And then I'm looking at this as the emperor, and uh, we can see the... Uh, the Mercury here with the wings on the hat but over here it looks like the female and it's not a very good uh, resolution it's the best I can do guys but um, it's showing I think her headdress you know like a scarf over her head but it definitely looks more feminine so I'm happy to say that this looks to me like the female and even up the top here it looks like there is um, um, a female here standing beside a what looks like a cow horn you know cow horns like Isis so I'm pretty happy to go with that okay so um, what we have here then at the third chakra is the solar plexus is the navel chakra and this is where the souls are birthed into and this is where the soul resides and they're even showing you this in this painting it's almost in relation to your body if you can imagine it almost um, and that's kind of your um, cave for your soul um, and this is where you're birthed into as you are you know created onto the material plane into your physical form it's through the navel chakra and then you also have two parts to your soul because you have the part to your soul that resides in your um, area of your navel which is the car and then you have the bar which is located up here at the third eye okay so we've got the we've got this here as the solar plexus and we can even see that this fits in with the key because we've got the number three here and we've got the three in the trinity as well showing that it's the trinity um, being birthed in to the physical container as well so it's just you know all there in that symbolism Plus it's the third chakra. So again, more confirmation. Now the next one is the heart. And we can see that it's the heart too because it's actually cut in half. The, the diagram is cut in half because of the heart chakra here. And that is showing you that you have to move beyond those gates to get to the upper ethereal energetic system. And the only way you can do that is completely letting go of foundation. And we can even see this in the way that they have actually created this optical illusion where when you look at it, it either looks like it's encompassing you and you're from the bottom being encompassed looking up trying to get there or that you're looking there on top at their, them in the garden. And so it's basically relaying to you that you've got to get from that bottom area up and move into the top ethereal energetic area. And that's only done through the heart and that's only done through letting go all of uh, your, you know, identity that you have with the material. Um, you have to completely let it go and that's the hardest thing, you know, because you're basically shedding yourself of everything that you've ever known um, yourself as being. And so this is, I suppose, why it's such a difficult process. And, but it's not one that's impossible. It's just when you know that this is a process you have to do to move through, it can make your journey easier rather than resisting it um, because we're all going through this. Everyone is going to go and experience this. No one is not going to experience it. It's just that those that are created closer to the divine are understanding this knowledge first. That's what's happening. 
And so everyone's eventually going to get this. It's just that it's a domino effect. It's cause and effect once again. And remember, it's even like the cup flowing over the ace of cups. You know, think of it how it flows over and then the information fills the cups below and then that flows over. That's how this knowledge works. And so that's how you move through the heart. You know, you start understanding yourself um, to that very core level that you need to believe in yourself enough to do that and to escape bondage from the material plane and have trust in yourself. And this is what I was saying about it. it's about this individual trust in yourself to do that and just to, to let go and actually do it. So anyway, just above the heart, so we've got the, the, the heart there separating the two, the upper and lower ethereal forces, and it's also being represented here in a way that you've got to move beyond um, the gates. And they've even also represented these as gates. And there's even, you know, wording here as to the type of traits that you have to have to move beyond these gates. And that's very interesting coming from the Freemasons. I'm sorry. When I see their page and I see that they're flogging off their businesses, no, I'm not. I'm not going to not, you know, say anything about that. This is our knowledge. They were supposed to hold this knowledge for us until the time was right and it was released and the time is now and they're still hoarding it and now they're just using it to gain themselves financially so no I don't agree with that at all you know I don't agree with people doing that with this information okay well, I've had my little rant about that let's move on to the next chakra which is the and this is the interesting one too. This is the truth chakra basically. This is your throat chakra where you express yourself. And this is also representing destiny because this is what shapes your destiny and what will shape your destiny as a soul. And so number five, it's the fifth chakra. It's representing the hierophant. So that's also, and we see them talking, the twin souls here talking. So that's also a very important chakra that's overlooked, but that is really the feather you know, that will weigh us, you know, whether we lived a truthful life or whether we didn't, you know, so that's the chakra we also have to move beyond and that's one of truth as well, an expression of the truth. And then this one's the door and again we see this even on the Kabbalah tree of life and it's called Daleth, the door, and this is the third eye. And this can also be opened and should be opened and you want it to be opened before the full illumination happens because otherwise you're just going to be blinded and you're not going to know what's happening to you. And so you're opening your third eye to understand who you are so that you're preparing for what's coming rather than just being basically blindsided and not understanding what's happening. So, you know, people are lucky to be coming across this information. You know, this is our information about us. So, you know, we're all custodians of this knowledge. And, you know, sometimes, um, you know, if I'm a little bit, you know, arrogant when I, you, people may view it as that, and I'm, not, and I'm not being that way, but sometimes, you know, people say, oh, it's great information. Well, I don't see it as great. I see it as profound, unbelievably significant information that is transforming us and giving us an understanding of who we are so for people to just dismiss it as great really means to me they don't understand it so if that's all you're seeing then really I would be watching the key and I would be getting a full understanding of all this information so that you know you don't need me to tell you what these are I mean I even had an you know a pe someone say oh you know doing videos to decode the Bible you know why you know you guys have got this information if that's what you want go and do it I mean I don't want to do it I want to just go where I'm guided that's how I research but if someone's got an insatiable uh, you know desire to, to do that you've got the codes now go and do it don't wait for me I mean this is what I'm saying I'm just the um, you know one of the cups that are overflowing to you guys now which then you go and overflow to other people I mean, that's how it works and that's how we take responsibility for the information and we do what we should be doing as a soul, helping others, you know, that's what it's all about and that's what is illuminating us and giving us, um, you know, the ability to move beyond this heart chakra because you're in servitude to others and you're working through the heart. Now the final one, of course, is the central sum, which is Orion and uh, that's at the crown. And of course, Orion has to be transmuted through our sun because that's how we manifest onto reality. So this is also really layered in a meaning that it is our sun too, but it is first and foremost um, Orion and the central sun. So there you go, guys. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. So I hope um, I've pretty much done a good job on that and uh, I'll talk to you soon. So until then, peace out.